this is Pat Quadros. Joining me today is Sonia Manzano here at the National Book Festival. It's 15th anniversary. Can't believe it's been that long. Thank you so much for joining us today. Sure, my pleasure. And we're here to talk about your new book, Becoming Maria. It talks about your time, uh, your childhood in the Bronx. So kind of go into that a little bit more and the experience of writing the book. Well, it, it's up to when I started my career on Sesame Street and I lived in the South Bronx in a very tumultuous uh, environment with uh, domestic violence and, and, and poverty and uh, it strikes me as somehow funny that I ended up being a character on an educational comedy show and I wanted to examine my journey, see where I went right, where I went wrong, uh, what I could have done better. And it gives me a chance to reflect now. Is it very challenging to have that lens turned on yourself and to be that honest? And I have a strange capacity for remembering things that happened in my as a preschooler, and I was always fascinated by that time in a kid's life when you're really trying to put two and two together. And I wanted to share that with others. I think it informed my life on Sesame Street and I wanted to, uh, to, to to take a good look at myself. There's a funny line in an Alice Monroe book where one character accuses the other of living in the past and the character says, I don't want to live in the past but I want to take a good look at it. And that's how I feel. You recently retired from being Maria on Sesame Street. Yeah. And I remember growing up watching right. you. And they let you be a writer on the show as yes. well. So what was that experience like? Um, I saw Carol Spinney a couple weeks ago at a convention, and he was talking about how one time he thought that they put portrayed Oscar as a bit mean, whereas Oscar's just a grouch, but he's, you know, he's yeah. willing to help out a friend. So did you ever have any battles... Um, not battles, but things that you really wanted to fight for at the show. I think they were very supportive of me. I wanted a better, a more accurate representation of Latino culture on the show, and they were quite open for for that. I mean, simple things, like there was a, a fruit cart on the show that it had bananas and apples, and I said, if this is a diverse neighborhood, it should have coconuts and mangoes and plantains on it. And, plantains, and, yes. And, and stuff like that, that people say, oh, this must be a Latin neighborhood. So I didn't really have to fight for that. I, uh, I got a little, I got into trouble for using Spanglish mm. because uh, these are New York made up words that Puerto Ricans made up that really excluded the Mexican-American children watching the show. <laughs> so we had to be selective on that. You had your daughter on the show a little bit. Yeah. Uh, and now she's a yoga instructor. Right. She's about my age. Yeah. A, a nice uh, thing that I learned. How, how's the relationship with your daughter and then working on television and then also trying to balance that with privacy for your family? What's right. that like? Well, I'll tell you, it's interesting. Children are born with their own set of tools, the same way I was. I was born in this crazy family, but I had my own set of tools that helped me keep my head above water. And I like being in front of people. Gabby was born with her own set of tools, and she does not like to be in front of people. She did not want to be on Sesame Street, which I was really shocked. I would want to be on Sesame Street. <laughs> she wanted to hang out with the Muppets in the Muppet Room. And the and, Muppets are coming back. Yeah, right, 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 right. But she, this, this was her, her own sensibility, and I sort of had to respect that. Uh, so, uh, And there's never been that much issue about protecting one's privacy on Sesame Street. We, we sort of are what you see, and uh, people sort of, sort of think that they really know you personally. So one last question. Let's talk about, about books. The theme here is I can't live without books. Um, so how do you balance you know, television and encouraging parents to balance out the time between reading and television because Sesame Street you know, teaches a lot about words and reading. Right, right, right. Well, I always tell, uh, I always alert them to the fact that kids have tastes. If you want your kid to read, they might not read a murder mystery. They might like a baseball book or they might like a love story or they might like a, a fairy tale book. I think a lot of parents just say, read, read, read without thinking that a kid might have taste. Uh, over one topic and obviously find the taste and 
and uh, let, let them read them that. Yeah. Well, great. Thank you so much for joining me for an interview today. You're very it's been welcome. It's so exciting to talk about your career and um, your book. Thank you very much. You're welcome.